Daniel, the crisis in which we live uh, and are living through today has brought up so many questions about church, about the importance of meeting, the meaning of meeting as a church, and uh, what does it mean, what's the importance of gathering together versus just a virtual gathering, for example. Some questions that have arisen in the last few months uh, have been, am I going to church for me or for God? Uh, how important is it to meet physically as a church? Uh, can a church split up into groups and gather in houses, or do they have to come together as one collective gathering? Just among you know, thousands of questions that have arisen that have in many ways stumbled many people and me included. So how can we go about addressing some of these questions? Yeah, I think it's we are living in times where rethinking about what is the church according to scripture is, is an important point and we have all been stirred up probably to to do that in some ways because we have been uh, ruffled up a little bit through the crisis and, and we're kind of bugged down at home, at least we in Switzerland, uh, for, for weeks actually. And, and then those questions come up, right? Um, and, and I think, you know, when we are thinking about the church, we have to look at it from God's side and, and first start to, to think about how, how important is it to God? What, what is the importance of the church to the heart of Christ? And I would like to start by reading a verse in Ephesians chapter 5, where it's a very well-known verse, actually, in chapter 5, verse 25, where it speaks of Christ. And he loved the church, and he gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the word with the, uh, by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. You see, that is what Christ has done in the past for the church. He gave himself, his life, and he's cleansing her, he is caring for her, he's nourishing her. And he wants to present her in the future also perfectly spotless and, and, and will we'll actually then we will have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And as, as the church will be up there, that will be a constant joy to the heart of Christ. But she's already a constant joy to his heart today. And when he was on the cross and he was suffering there, he was thinking about what he was acquiring um, so that, that's, that's the first thing. And then when we look at this, we also think right away, yes, but is he really so pleased today? I mean, when, when we see of all the, um, the weakness that is, that has become apparent in the church, is, 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 is Christ's heart really rejoicing? Can he be happy with us as his people? And, you know, I feel we are sometimes in, in times almost like, in the times of Ezra and Nehemiah, because these were guys that came back actually from the Babylonian captivity. They had been unfaithful, the people of Israel really, and had not kept the Sabbath years. I don't go into the details now, but God said, you have not kept those Sabbath years, and now you, have, you will have to keep them forcibly. And he sent them for 70 years into the Babylonian uh, captivity. And when the time was finished, then he, he allowed a remnant to come back, actually. Those that had their hearts still where God had placed his name to be. In the Old Testament, you see, it was a, it was a geographical place. It was uh, Jerusalem. God had said over and over that he placed his name, he linked his name to that one place. That was the place of worship. That was where the Israelites had to, to come up three times a year and to bring their sacrifices and to worship. And so uh, this is what we have in the Old Testament. And we understand that now in the New Testament, things are not uh, earthly anymore, but they are heavenly, they are spiritual. And so there is a place today uh, where God has linked his name with, so to speak, where God is dwelling in the Old Testament. Again, was Jerusalem. There he was dwelling. There they could meet in a certain form. But today in the New Testament, uh, it is actually the church. It's called the Temple of the Holy Spirit. 
And so it is amazing when you think about that and you realize that we are talking about something that is very precious to his heart, very real, and yet it needs to be perceived in a spiritual way and needs to be lived out in a spiritual way. Hmm. Thanks for watching The Church Call. If you enjoyed the clip and want to watch the full discussion, check out the lower left video. We upload new content Thursdays and occasionally Tuesdays, so subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay tuned. To learn more about today's video or to ask a question, please leave a comment below. We do want this to be a God-honoring environment, so we ask for comments to be made in grace and truth to one another. God bless and remember to rethink church biblically.